The Cavalcade of America, starring Robert Young. Tonight, direct from the stage of the Municipal Auditorium in Charleston, West Virginia, the DuPont Company brings you Under the Big Top, starring Robert Young on The Cavalcade of America. Here is Gain Whitman. Good evening. Tonight, Cavalcade comes to you for the first time from Charleston, West Virginia. In our studio audience in Charleston, as special guests, are more than 3,500 DuPont men and women from this area. You've heard us speak of the products of DuPont research and applied chemical science as better things for better living. The things manufactured in the DuPont Company's Bell plant at Charleston more than merit that distinction. They include the nylon chemicals from which nylon yarns and nylon plastics are made. Mycoban propionates, which protect your bread and baked goods. And Xeron and Xerex antifreeze mixtures for your car. It is the men and women of DuPont, as represented by the men and women of this audience, who express the true significance of the DuPont Company's pledge, Better Things for Better Living, through chemistry. For our music tonight... We are happy to have with us Charleston's own symphony orchestra under the direction of Antonio Motorelli. And now, Under the Big Top, starring Robert Young as John Kenna on The Cavalcade of America. It's 1877 in Charleston, West Virginia. In his home, Congressman John Kenna is working on a speech. Citizens of West Virginia, <clears throat> I uh, wish to speak to you briefly on a matter of great importance. Uh, now, uh, next month, when you... Uh, Daddy? Will... Oh, what is it, dear? Can I ask you something? Margie, I'm working on a speech. Will you take me to the circus today? No. <laughs> oh, now, now, Margie, don't... <laughs> Cry, this is the only day the circus will be in, Charles. I know, and I'm awfully sorry, Margie, but you see, and, I... And there's a famous clown called Lola. Yes, I know, I know. They, they, they call him the nervous clown because he's always getting all confused. Yes, I know, but uh, Margie, you're a big girl now, so I want to explain to you exactly what I'm doing and why I can't go. Uh, and they have trapeze artists and wild animals? Yes, yes, of course. Here, let me wipe those tears away. Yeah, that's better. Now, Margie, when uh, Congress is in session, where do I go? Washington. Because that's the capital, isn't it? I guess so. I want to see Lola. Now, here in West Virginia, we should also have a capital. But ever since we became a state, our state government has wandered from one town to another. So next month, there will be an election to decide our state capital. And your daddy and a lot of other people want it to be right here in Charleston. Why? Well, it'll be a wonderful thing. Why? Well, just think, if the state legislature meets here, it, uh, well, it won't matter much to Charleston whether the circus ever comes here again or not. What's legislature? The legislature? Oh, that's, uh... Do the, they have clowns? The clowns? <laughs> do, they, do they have trapeze artists? Well, no, Margie, I'm afraid they don't Margie? exactly. Oh, here, darling, in my study. Margie! Now, Margie, I told you not to bother your daddy. He has an important speech to work on. Will you take me to the circus, Mommy? But, Margie, I'm going to hear Daddy's speech. Oh. Now, run along and don't bother him again. <laughs> I want to see Lolo the Clown. Oh, I feel awful about this. Oh, it's too bad. But frankly, even when I hear the word circus, I feel as if I want to hit somebody. Well, what do you mean? Well, on my last speeches, yesterday in Clinton and the day before in Elkhurst, I hardly had any audience. And Why? Because the circus was in town. Oh, dear. And this afternoon, it'll be the same thing. We're campaigning right in the middle of the circus season. What? Well, you're worried, aren't you, darling? Of course. We're up against it. The speakers for Clarksburg and Martinsburg were through here weeks ago. They blanketed the state while I was still up in Congress. Oh, it's too bad. Now, Mr. Freer and I follow with little open-air speeches competing with the circus. Well, don't worry, dear. I'll bring Margie this afternoon, and we'll applaud like mad. You watch. <laughs> you're sweet. My constituents. That's just what we are. And everything will be all right. You'll see. <laughs> Ladies.
ladies and gentlemen, citizens of the Mountain State of West Virginia, I stand before you to speak on behalf of our fair city of Charleston. Situated on the right bank of the noble Kanawha River at its junction with the River Elk, our city has been proposed as the capital city of this state. And I earnestly suggest hey, that... Uh, the Just a minute. Just a moment, folks, please. Margie, Friends, Margie, listen. Margie, come back. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, John. So even my own daughter got away from us. Well, let her enjoy the parade. But she slipped away like a little rabbit. Gone. All of them gone. Oh, wait a minute. There's an old man behind you at the other side of the platform. Why, he's coming over. Hey, mister. Hey, is this speech all finished? I guess so. You're the only one left. But anyway, thanks for staying. Hey, can't hear you. I said thanks for staying. I'm stone deep. But I sure do love to stand in a crowd listening to a speech. Reminds me of the old days when I could hear him. John. I, uh, see. He used to have some fine speeches about the Mexican War and abolition. That must have been quite a while ago. Well, if you're finished, I'll be getting along. Bye, young fella. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. Well, that's that. Next stop, Huntington. I better get home and pack for my train this evening. John, I feel so sad about your going like this. And I always worry about trains. Now, Anne, these are modern times. The railroads are getting more wonderful and safer all the time. I'll be all right. I hope so, John. May I uh, share this seat with you? Why, of course. Sit down, please. Ah... Thanks. Great thing, these railroads. Yes, amazing. Do they uh, make you nervous, the uh, speed and all? No, not me. You know, I can remember coming through here in the old days, pulling through mud, fording the rivers. Now we just ride across the pretzels, uh, the uh, trestles. <laughs> you uh, come through here often? Every year. Traveling man, huh? Well, you, you, uh, you might call it that. Say... Aren't you Congressman Penna? Uh, Kenna? That's right. I thought I recognized you. I doted on you. I, I mean, I, I, I voted for you. <laughs> Excuse me, I, I'm a little nervous. Well, thanks for the vote. Are you headed for Huntington, too? Yes, I'm making a speech there tomorrow. I'm campaigning for Charleston, for the state capitol. Oh, yes. Uh, how are you making out? Terribly. And frankly, if I have to compete with the circus again in Huntington, I'm going to declare war. Oh? Everywhere I go, all I hear is the circus. Oh. And Lolo, the clown. <laughs> I tell you, if I get my hands on that Lolo, I'll... I'll what, what'll you do? I'll probably wring his neck. Well, start ringing, Mr. Kenna. What? Oh, no. You're, you're not... The... I, I, I'm Lolo, the clown. <laughs> oh, I, I, I'm terribly sorry. Oh, don't worry about that. You know, I, I really, I'm afraid we are competing again tomorrow. The circus is also headed for Huntington. Oh, my. Yes, they're traveling by wagon while I'm staying by train. Ow! Ken, are you all right? Ooh, what a joke. Almost threw me off my seat. The train stopped awfully suddenly. Well, what do you suppose is wrong? Say, we've stopped in the middle of a trestle. Look, look at the river, way down there. You know, that Joel almost felt as if we jumped a rail. Or, or... What's the matter? What's the matter? Tell me. I, I don't Tell know, me. madam, but I'm sure we're all right. Why have we stopped right here on the trestle? I don't know, but I'm sure everything's under control. It's so high up. I'm frightened. Please, please, just be calm now. But maybe the, there's uh... something wrong with the trestle. Becky, maybe it's going to collapse. Now, madam, I don't think there's any... We're all going to be killed. We've got to get out of here. Open the window. It's better to jump. Please, madam, you, you, you must... It's better to uh... jump than just sit here and be killed. Oh, help! Help! Open the door! Open the window! Hey, this is serious. Let me out of better here. There. People, people, please. Quiet, quiet, ladies and gentlemen. Please be calm for a moment and listen. I want to introduce to you Lolo, the famous clown. Here he is right here, Lolo himself. Lolo, please, can't you calm them? Well, I, I don't know. I, I, I'll try. My fair friends, uh, uh, my uh, dear friends, sneeze, please, please be calm. There is no danger. It is glue, true, that our brain is clucked. I mean, our train is stuck, stuck on a thistle, uh, a nestle. I mean, 
it's duck on a trestle. But you have faith in our ginger beer, uh, engineer. He says never cross your bridge work before the barn door has been stolen. Uh, uh, no, I mean, an ounce of prevention is worth two in the bush. So just settle up, down, and hate. I mean, wait, and let me yell, smell, uh, tell t about railroads and steam engines. When Benjamin Franklin sent his tea kettle into the clouds on a kite... No, no, no. Uh, when James Watt kited a check, uh, sent, sent a key tied to Benjamin Franklin and let him boil over... No, no. Uh, what? Every children knows that if Benjamin Watt hadn't let his mother's key boil over... No, no. When James Franklin, James Watt's mother, cried, fry, tied her boil, her boiling tea kettle to her bridge work... Uh, no, no, why... Uh, why, it's a hysterical fact. Steam would never have been discovered. And that began steam cleaning. I mean, uh, steam. That panting iron hearse, horse that mauls this train, that tea kettle, that kite. Gentlemen, uh, have I hate, uh, made myself queer? Uh, uh, uh. And now, a few words from our friend, Congressman Kenna. Your turn now, Congressman. Well, friends, I, uh, I'm no entertainer, but I, I just thought that uh, while we're waiting for word from the conductor as to how long we'll be here, it, it might interest you to know that many of the old settlers going out to the Ohio Valley used to uh, pass through these very hills. You can imagine them winding along way down there in their covered wagons. If they had trouble with Indians, they would uh, seek refuge at Fort Lee, which stood right where the present city of Charleston now stands. You see, that was an important center even then. Now, it might also interest you to know that uh, Daniel Boone tramped many times through these hills and for a while lived in a log cabin near Charleston and represented the county during the time that... Uh, uh, oh, we're starting. We're moving. We're off. Yeah. Well, here comes the conductor. Yeah. Uh, Congressman Kenna, well done. I certainly want to thank you for what you've done. Oh, I'm glad we could help. Is uh, everything all right now, Conductor? Yes, yes. We had a loose rail on the bridge and the baggage car went off the track, but we got it back on. Oh, that's fine. But if we'd had a panic there on that trestle, it could have been terrible. Yes, I know. Well, gentlemen, I, I've got to go on and collect my tickets. Again, many thanks. Goodbye. Goodbye. Goodbye, Conductor. Well, Congressman, we make a good team. I kind of thought so myself. Lolo and uh, Kenna. <laughs> <laughs> from me, nonsense, and from you, nuggets of wisdom. Uh, the way you tell it, it sounds good. With a little circus promotion, maybe we'd do all right. That's just what I was thinking. Now, you told us some interesting things about that city of yours, Congressman, and I'm sold on it. Now, here's what I'm thinking. Why couldn't you and I get together and make a plan something like this? Suppose we go to Mr. Robinson. Mommy, guess what? Well, what? The circus is playing at some place down the river today, and there's a special boat going this morning. Can we go, please? Oh, Marjorie, are you still thinking about that circus? But all the kids have seen Lolo the Clown and the Man-Eating Animals. Well, and... where is this place that the circus is playing? I hadn't heard about it's it. It's Saint, uh, Saint... Saint Albans? That's right. Oh, how awful. Your poor daddy, he's supposed to speak there today. He is? Oh, dear, that means no one will listen to him again. Hi, anybody home? Dad! We're in here, John. Aha, uh -huh, my fine family. Daddy. Oh, John, I'm glad to see you. I've traveled ever since dawn to get here. Now, listen, get dressed for a boat ride and hurry. You're going downriver to hear me make a speech. That's St. Albans. That's right. And I've got some extra special seats for you. Look, ringside seats. Ringside seats? What do you mean? They're the tickets. That's what they are. Daddy, these are circus tickets. Are they? But what you say? I said you're going to hear me make a speech. Now, no questions. Hurry. You've got half an hour to make that boat. Listening to Robert Young as John Kenner with Roy Atwell as Lolo the Clown in Under the Big Top on the Cavalcade of America, sponsored by the DuPont Company, maker of better things for better living through chemistry. As the second part of our story opens, we're in St. Albans, West Virginia, downriver from Charleston. Our scene, the circus. Waiting for 
for Lolo the Clown in his famous and perilous act in the jaws of death. In this act, Lolo the Clown will insert his head in the jaws of a savage and ferocious lion from the deepest African jungles. Ready, Lolo? Uh-huh, I'm ready. We open the cage of the lion. Lolo enters. Quiet, please. Quiet now, Leo. I close the cage. Calm down, please, Cleo. Uh, Leo. Take it easy. Keep your temper. Uh, keep, keep your temper. Now open your ear, uh, your mouth. The dread experiment begins. Wider. That's it. Uh, nice molar. Mmm. Looks kind of mug, uh, snug in there. Snug as a rug and a bug. Well, run, Jim. <laughs> the head of Lolo the Clown is now inserted in the treacherous jaws of Leo the Lion. Oh. Will Lolo the Clown live through this terrible ordeal? Will he survive? Can he return alive from the very jaws of death itself? We will know in just a moment. But while we await the outcome of this perilous deed, Lolo the Clown has asked me to introduce to you his friend, Congressman John Kenner of Charleston, with a message of great importance. Congressman Kenner. Ladies and gentlemen, citizens of West Virginia, Next month, you will decide the capital of our growing state. And with the fullest conviction, I urge you to cast your vote for the city of Charleston. Its fine location will give unity to our state. It is easily reached by rail or river from all parts of the state. It has a glorious history that goes back to pioneer days. And finally, it lies in an area rich in natural resources which even now are drawing men and women to this promising city. Here is a natural capital. I therefore urge you, give it your vote. And now we open the cage of Leo the lion. Oh. Open your mouth, Leo. That's it. Lolo, are you all right? Lolo, how are you? Out of the cage this way. Lolo, Lolo, speak. Speak to the crowd to show them you're all right. Say something, anything. Hello, Ben, uh, friends. Folks of St. Albans, how are you going to vote next month? Tell him, friends. <laughs> friends of Webster Springs, I'd just like to know, how are you going to vote? And now, men and women of the town of Fayetteville, how are you going to vote? Members of the legislature, uh, before we open this session, the first in our new home, it is fitting we should hear first from a guest who is with us in the gallery, a man to whom we owe so much, Congressman Kenner. <laughs> Friends, Romeo Freer and I, who formed your uh, campaign committee, thank you for your applause. But the uh, man you really ought to be hearing from is the man sitting right beside me. I give you Lolo the Clown. <laughs> Friends, I, 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 uh, I'm bunned, uh, stunned, stunned. George Washington once said, uh, we, we all remember when George Crossington washed the Delaware liver, uh, River. <laughs> and he said, the voice of the steeple, he, uh, oh, I, I mean, uh, uh, oh, Congressman Kenner, uh, help me out, will you? I, uh, <laughs> I think Lolo is trying to say that it isn't often in history that people get a chance to choose a capital city themselves. 
And when it happens, it's a fine thing to be in on. And that's why Lolo and I and all of us should be happy to be here today in our capital city of West Virginia, Charleston. In just a moment, our star, Robert Young, will return to our cavalcade microphone. But first, here is Gain Whitman speaking for DuPont. Charleston, West Virginia, from which this DuPont cavalcade comes to you, is an unusual and inspiring city in several respects. A pleasant place in which to live, bright with rhododendrons and roses, circled by green hills. Charleston has proved to be a convenient location for industry. And it has also achieved a cultural level of which many a larger place might well be proud. Very proud indeed. A unique advertisement appeared some time ago, for instance, in the chemical and engineering news. Wanted, it read, chemical engineers and chemists who are also symphony musicians. Who wanted these scientists who were also symphony musicians? The industrial plants of Charleston and the townspeople. Today, as a result, Charleston has its own symphony orchestra, which is providing the music for our cavalcade this evening. Some of our actors, too, are Charleston men and women from the Kanawha Players. The works of Charleston painters and sculptors are on exhibit from time to time. Accomplishments of this stature do not come by accident. They are achieved only through imagination, planning, and enterprise, and lots of hard, hard work. The DuPont Company is represented in this Charleston community by a plant devoted to what is known technically as high-pressure synthesis. In this plant, pressures up to 15,000 pounds to the square inch and extremes of temperature ranging from 350 degrees below zero Fahrenheit to 2,400 degrees above are tools used in the manufacture of chemical compounds such as the DuPont Zeron and Xerox antifreeze you use in the radiator of your car in the wintertime. The liquid from which lucite acrylic plastics are made. And the nylon chemicals, which, after processing, become nylon yarns and nylon plastics. Plants are nothing without people, however. It is the men and women of the DuPont Company and of this Charleston community with their friendly spirit of cooperation and service, who are responsible for these DuPont better things for better living through chemistry. And now, here is our star, Robert Young. Thank you. It's good to be here in Charleston, bringing you a story of Charleston. And it's a privilege to present now, as a special feature, the Charleston Symphony Orchestra. The orchestra includes doctors, merchants, teachers, housewives, students, and scientists working in the chemical industries of this area. Here they are now with The Dance of the Buffoons by Rimsky-Korsakov. <laughs> Thank you. 
Thank you, Mr. Motorelli, and thanks to your symphony orchestra. Some months ago, we brought our listeners one of the most exciting stories ever produced on Cavalcade, a story that brought many requests for a repeat broadcast. A baby is born of apparently healthy parents, yet the baby is doomed to die because of a mysterious something in the blood. Be sure to listen next Monday to The Stirring Blood with the original cast starring Lee Bowman and Una Merkel on The Cavalcade of America. Tonight's cavalcade was based on the true story of how Charleston became the capital of West Virginia. Featured opposite Robert Young in the role of Mrs. Kenna was Nancy Kenna Morton of Charleston, granddaughter of Congressman John Kenna. Roy Atwell was heard as Lolo, the famous clown. Others in the cast were Sarah Fussell, Nancy Sheridan, Robert Dryden, Neil O'Malley, Frank Milano, William Wyatt, and Richard Hogue. The music for tonight's DuPont Cavalcade was composed by Arden Cornwell, and the Charleston Symphony Orchestra was under the direction of Antonio Motorelli. Our cavalcade was written by Eric Barno. Robert Young will soon be seen starring in the RKO picture, They Won't Believe Me. This is Bill Hamilton inviting you to listen next week to Lee Bowman and Una Merkel in The Stirring Blood on the Cavalcade of America, brought to you by the DuPont Company of Wilmington, Delaware. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.